this part here is the stigma of the plant. Okay, this is the one that receives the pollen. So the pollen of the plant, which is produced in the enter, which is this part here. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What is up YouTube? Welcome to the Ego Forestry Academy channel. Today I'm gonna to talk about passion fruit pollinization. Why it's important to do it manually so that you have higher yields. So first let's just take a sip of coffee and let's get right to it. First thing we have to understand about passion fruit and we've got a passion fruit plant right here, which if you haven't seen in a previous video, you should definitely check it out when I talked about passion fruit pruning. So I've got this plant here. It's got a main stem, which comes all the way from there. You can see it's right here, the main stem of the plant. And it was conducted to this wooden structure where it now is hanging it's uh these are its third order branches and these are the productive ones you know there's a big passion fruit here already this one weighs at least half a kilo and we've got another one here and a couple more coming here so there's lots of plants a lot lots of fruit now uh, it's really important to understand a few things about the passion fruit flower let's check it out so first thing, let's understand a bit about the anatomy of this flower. I'm going to use a bit of a piece of stick to explain it to you how that works. Now, this part here is the stigma of the plant. Okay, this is the one that receives the pollen. So the pollen of the plant, which is produced in the enter, which is this part here, needs to touch the stigma. Now, as you can see by the anatomy of the plant, it's almost impossible for the pollen is right underneath here. Let's try to take a look at it. All right. You can see that the anther of the plant is full of pollen. You can see it's uh, this yellowish powder. So since the pollen is underneath, on, on the low part of the anther, it's never going to touch the stigma by its own. It needs a big insect to, to rub its back here and make the pollen stick to the stigma of the plant. And these animals, the, the insects that do this, they are a specific species of bee it's a, a big bee here in Brazil. We call it mamangava. Let's try to get a picture of that bee up on the screen so that you can learn to identify it. This is the main pollinator of passion fruit here in Brazil. Um, that's one point. So you need, you need this bee to pollinate your passion fruit. Now, the second point is <laughs> there's a fly here is that the passion fruit needs uh, to receive a, the pollen from another plant, from another passion fruit plant, because it's, a, it's not compatible with its own pollen. So although the flowers have both the male and female parts, you can't get the pollen of, this, of one plant and try to, to fertilize its own stigma. You need to bring pollen out from another plant. That's a very important thing because, you know, if you have one passion fruit around your place, it's never going to produce significant amount. It might, it might produce one or two fruits, but it's really not going to fertilize itself. It needs another plant. So you need to get pollen from one plant, one passion fruit plant to the other passion fruit plant. And so when you have like uh, many passion fruits, plants planted in a row that's pretty easy because you, you just 
you're just you, with your fingers you're just grabbing the flowers and pulling the pollen out and you, you're moving from flower to flower inevitably you're going to be moving pollen from one plant to the other but if you've got passion fruit spread around you know just a few plants like for example right now here i've got like five passion fruit plants uh flowering and, and they're all spaced very far apart so i actually have to go get pollen from one plant and bring to this plant so i have uh i have some pollen right here so i got the anthers from another plant another passion fruit plant and i'm gonna put this pollen here in this plant that i just showed you so these are a few important things about the passion fruit flower it needs cross pollination meaning pollen from another passion fruit plant the main pollinator is uh, this specific bee so it needs to be around then there's the fact that the passion fruit flowers they only open in the afternoon after midday and they only they're only viable for one afternoon if they're not pollinated during this afternoon they die you don't get a second chance to pollinate and then you have to wait for the next flower to come obviously it's always producing more flowers during its uh, its flowering season and then the Another point which is important is that there are a few factors that might might damage the pollen of the plant. So, you know, if you're not quick in getting the pollen, you might lose it. So heavy rain, you know, might might make the pollen drop from the flower. Then small bees, you know, just regular honey bees. And there are a couple of other species. They might uh, go to the flowers. They might rub their backs on the pollen, and they might, you know, get the pollen but not pollinate the, f the flowers because they're not big enough, you know, to rub the stigma of the plant. So you might lose the pollen to heavy rain or to to honeybees or this black bee here, which we call arapuá in Brazil. This one might steal the pollen as well. So all of these are factors that might work against you when, you know, trying to get a good fruit set in passion fruit. Check this out. So all this, these are lost flowers. Each one of these is a lost flower because it wasn't pollinated. Look at this. The amount of flowers that were lost due to lack of pollinization. You can see there are a bunch of them on the, on the soil. They drop from the plant and they, you know, they were not pollinated. So they just drop from the plant. Whereas these ones that were pollinated, you know, they will produce the fruit and, and the fruit is gonna be eaten by us. <laughs> so now the pollinization process is just, it's very simple. I'm gonna show it to you. So first of all, I'm gonna get my uh, my fingers dirty with pollen. You can see here, so I'm just, you know I'm just rubbing um, rubbing my fingers in the in the anthers of this plant that I got. So you know here I've got a bit of pollen here. And I'm going to the stigma of the plant, and I'm just gonna touch it, and that's it. It's sticky. It gets it it gets it sticks to the to the stigma. Now it's obviously a bit harder doing that while holding the camera, but uh, I can do it. Another thing that you can do is uh, you just get the whole anther of the plant like this, and you just rub it on the stigmas. You can see that each each flower has three stigmas. You know, make sure you you pollinate all of them. So there you go. I've done two of them. And now for the third one, there you go. Now they're all pollinated. Look, they all have pollen in its surface. So this plant is pollinated. I can be sure that tomorrow it's not going to drop. Let's do another one. I've got another open flower here. Let's do it. Let's get a stigma. I mean an enter. This is an enter. The stigma is the female part. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that pollen gets stuck to it. The best thing is to get your finger dirty. Just makes it easier. There you go. One, two, and three. These are the two flowers that I have for the day. The other ones aren't ready yet. So that's it for today. Um, you can see it's a fairly simple process. Like I said, if you have, you know, a row of 10, 15, 20, 100, 200 passion fruits, you're just gonna, you know, with your hands, you're not, you don't have to be so precious about it. You know, just you, you just grab the, the, the anthers of the plant. And as you pull your fingers through them, your fingers are going to uh, naturally touch the, the stigma of the plant and since you're doing many flowers you know in a short period of time you're going to have pollen from all the flowers in your fingers all of the time so you inevitably you're going to be getting pollen from one plant to the other so you know you can do it really fast you just uh, you know grab the, the the flowers and pull your fingers backwards you know bringing all the pollen into your fingers and touching the stigma at the same time so that's it Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful to you. Make sure you grow your passion fruits. And, you know, now if you've seen flowers falling off your passion fruits and you haven't, uh, you weren't sure why, this could be one of the reasons they're not being pollinated properly. Now you know how to do it. So if you haven't, do check out the video about the passion fruit pruning so that you know how to conduct it in a way that makes it easier for you to pollinate it. And for it to be to have uh, receive more sunlight and all the all of the leaves to make sure it's easier for you to harvest and so that you get higher yields and bigger passion fruit. So this is Felipe for the Agroforestry Academy and I'm signing out.